Sonic fan games are like the lifeblood of the Sonic community. I mean, how many fan games are really out there? And Sega just lets it happen, which is great. If you're a budding developer, go make a Sonic game. Anyway, since it's Mentoctober and the Talkman Takeover, we're gonna take a look at five creepy Sonic games, or more specifically, Sonic fan games. And I know what you're thinking. Well, are you gonna cover Sonic.exe again? No, that's already been done, and if you haven't seen that video, go check it out. If you need a quick summary on Sonic.exe, it's actually based on a creepypasta that's made by someone that I won't name right now. The story details a cursed Sonic cartridge, with Sonic being a murderous entity in his own video game, killing off his friends in the process. This led to the creation of a game based off of the creepypasta, which exploded in popularity on YouTube a few years back. The release of this game and its popularity on YouTube opened the floodgates to creepy Sonic content. Sonic.exe took the internet by storm, and it spread to even other video game characters while it was at it. The games I'm covering in this video may or may not be related to Sonic.exe, but I guess it's good to know that that exists in the first place. If you're sensitive to dark, morbid, or creepy topics, maybe it's better to avoid this video. Just a fair warning. Anyway, without further ado, let's get spooky in this bitch. Number 5. Sonic.exe Nightmare Beginning If you thought the original Sonic.exe was a little too short for your tastes, Sonic.exe Nightmare Beginning has a little bit more plot for you to chew on this time around. This is part of a series known as the Sonic.exe Nightmare Version series by Jay's Coys. The game starts similarly to Sonic.exe with a character select screen with Tails, Knuckles, and Dr. Eggman. Tails' anus-clenching adventure begins with him arriving in Green Hill Zone after being summoned by Sonic. But of course, things immediately start to go horribly wrong. The bloody corpses of Flickies can be seen scattered across the grass, with more and more blood gracing the screen while Tails begins to express visible discomfort. Just as a side note, Props to these custom-made sprites, as there weren't in the original Sonic.exe game. Ironically, it's a little less jarring watching Tails actually freak out when he sees this massacre than just having an expressionless sprite running through the bloody field. Oh, and hi Sonic. You get to the end of the stage, so Tails has nothing else to do but turn back, only to have Sonic scare the ever-living shit out of you by running at you at 500 miles per hour. He tells you to follow him to figure out what the heck is going on in Green Hill. But you guys already know he's not in his right mind. Cue the jump scare. Come out to play. So Tails gets got and sent to another zone, only to play a sadistic game of hide and seek with your boy Sonic. Unlike the original Sonic.exe game, there is a way to survive the encounter. There's even extra lives laying around just in case you get caught. The purpose is to trick Sonic.exe to collect rings that are littered throughout the map while hiding in the bushes as Tails. Full transparency, in my playthrough, I had no idea what was going on. But the idea is to play actual hide and seek to outsmart Sonic. Somehow, I did it correctly and survived the level as Tails. Take that, you creepy asshole. The fighting freak Knuckles, similarly to Tails, is lured to Scrap Brain Zone by Sonic. A thick red gas pollutes the level, with Knuckles starting to realize something's not right. Sonic.exe is also known as Exectior in this lore and begins to stalk Knuckles until your boy punches his ass right through a wall. He's not having any of that shit. But after that, Knuckles will need to make a break for it. But make sure you don't get caught, like I did. I died. Once you escape, you get to Eggman's level, who is rightfully stressed as a murderous Sonic tears apart his entire robot army and zeroes in on Eggman to take his life. To get through this level successfully, you must become one with the darkness dodging spotlights along the pass to avoid being spotted. Just be careful you're taking the right paths, or you will get got. Once you've escaped, the game proceeds to end, which will change depending on how many characters you manage to save. My Knuckles died, so Tails ended up killing off Sonic for his sins. The true ending requires you to warp to Scrap Brain Zone during Tails' level, where the real Sonic is being held. Once Tails frees him, you learn exactly how Sonic managed to become possessed. This whole cutscene is nightmare fuel, and expands the Sonic.exe world into something wilder that I didn't even expect. If you want to learn more, I'd recommend checking the game out. Once you've saved Sonic and all three characters are alive and well, Sonic must face off with Exectior in an epic final boss battle. 
and with the power of the Master Emerald, our heroes managed to exorcise the demon once and for all. The lore is pretty deep, and I'm kind of giving the cliff notes here, but honestly I always thought the original Sonic.exe needed a fresh coat of paint, or at least give the ability to have the characters survive. This series has two other games in it, focusing on the follow-up to Sonic.exe, Sally.exe. So if you enjoy the creepypasta vibes with some original characters and story, go ahead and go check this one out on Game Jolt. Number 4. Five Nights at Sonic's Maniac Mania This wouldn't be a proper Sonic creepy collection without a Five Nights at Freddy's style game thrown in the mix. This is Five Nights at Sonic's Maniac Mania. This is the last entry in the Five Nights at Sonic series, with this game taking the model from Ultimate Custom Night. You have many different characters to choose from to come try and kill you. Sonic.exe inspired characters, Five Nights at Freddy's inspired Sonic characters, Mario characters, tons of original characters all with different attack methods that you'll have to stay on your toes to properly defend yourself from. While a majority of these patterns are straight from Five Nights at Freddy's, this particular fan game has quite a bit of charm to it with all completely hand-drawn animations and environments, and pretty bone-chilling jump scares. You can customize the aggressiveness of each character all the way up to level 50 to really test your FNAF skills. I'm not exactly the best FNAF player, so I can already tell you I failed this game a lot. The difficulty is not something to sneeze at. This game will test your patience and reflexes just like Ultimate Custom Night. There's even a survival mode where you can aim to survive a never-ending night, with the AI of the characters slowly leveling up at random the longer you last. There are even preset challenges that build you all the way up to the Maniac Mania challenge, where the game literally throws everything at you. I didn't even make an attempt at this, but honestly, it looks like a ton of fun for my sadists out there. Similarly to FNAF, there are loads of achievements to unlock, and if you're truly a completionist, you can snag all the jump scare animations to view at your leisure. The creators have since moved on to do a reboot of the series with Five Nights at Sonic's Act 1, which will be an overhauled remake of the first game with new gameplay, enhanced visuals, and even controller support. So check out this series on Game Jolt. You can truly see the evolution of the devs' talents with each entry. Number 3. Sonic The Murdering Insanity This is a horror RPG demo that was released for the Sonic Amateur Games Expo in 2019 by Team Cosmos, or Cosmos if they're Xenosaga fans. It began with the setup of Sonic looking for his friends, who suddenly disappeared one day. I know English may not be the first language of the team, but the intro text needs some sprucing up for sure. Sonic, tails in place you don't want to be at. <laughs> Sonic came in that castle. <laughs> oh, I'm sure he did. Oh boy. Okay, so Sonic is lured into a castle, and the game begins with him attempting to find a way out. Instead of possessing rings in this game, Sonic has a health meter that can be filled up by potions laying around if you take damage. For the most part, he controls pretty fluidly, like the classic games. But I think the level design can be pretty empty at times. You can save at any point in the level, which I'd advise you do often, because there are plenty of moments in this game where you can get insta-killed. Eventually, you meet a dark version of Sonic with red eyes, who antagonizes Sonic and says he will never leave the castle. This begins a chase sequence, which I'm all for, that part is pretty cool, but there are traps littered throughout this level that will kill you instantly without warning. I get the game is making attempts to be a darker telling of Sonic's experience, but man, if you're not saving mid-level, you're not getting through this alive on the first few tries. Once you get through this grueling chase, Sonic encounters two doors and the player will have to choose which one to go through. There's no indicator on which is the right one, it's all based on luck. And if you enter the wrong one, you get a long cutscene of dark spirits explaining how excited they are to give Sonic a miserable, painful death. I can definitely tell this game is directly inspired by the horror RPG Corpse Party which, if you're into really unsettling and dark content, that's the game for you. In fact, they're coming out with a 2021 remaster to traumatize a brand new generation. The Murdering Insanity similarly puts you in scenarios where you die instantly by going through the wrong door, or picking up items that you're not supposed to, and describing the death in graphic detail, a feature straight out of Corpse Party. They even use a few tracks from that game as well. 
So I see Team Cosmos' intentions here on fusing a Sonic platformer with a dark story-based game like Corpse Party. And while it's a decent idea for a fan game, the execution of the level design is my main issue here. The grammar errors in the storytelling make what could be truly disturbing and creepy scenes somewhat comedic. So in the second level of the demo, Demonic Forest, you have to collect three keys to get through a door at the end, to proceed, and the chapter just suddenly ends. As frustrating as some of the moments were in this demo, I was actually interested to see where the devs were taking this experience. Unfortunately, I found out the team has since gone their separate ways and abandoned the project. Honestly, with the right polish and writing, this could be a creepy fan game for Sonic that doesn't rely on Sonic.exe lore the whole time. Hopefully one day Team Cosmos can rise from the ashes and complete their vision. Number 2. Sonic CD Alternative Ending Sonic CD Alternative Ending begins with the final level of Sonic CD, Metallic Madness, with Sonic powering through the level to stop Eggman's plans on Little Planet once and for all. Just as the title suggests, once Sonic defeats Eggman, the events that occur are a little different than what we're used to. After his defeat, Little Planet begins to descend on the Earth below, as Sonic can only look up in horror as everyone attempts to flee its impending impact. You then take control of Sonic, who uses his blistering speed to escape the crash. If you manage to escape, the text, I'm sorry Little Planet appears on screen, showcasing the guilt and regret Sonic has for his careless actions. The remainder of the fan game shows Sonic struggling to cope with the death and despair caused by his actions, as the world begins to slowly die around him. Even at the speed of sound, he cannot escape his guilt, and slowly he begins to break down. As visions of the death of his friends close in around him, he succumbs to his regret and takes his own life. I wanted to include this fan game since it's another creepy Sonic game that resides outside of the Sonic.exe lore, which are surprisingly hard to find in the midst of all these fan games. While it covers rather dark topics, taking the ending of an existing game and flipping it on its head to tell a much more morbid story makes for an interesting fan game experience. But play this one at your own risk if these topics are too heavy. But if you are interested, it definitely won't take you too long, and there's a secret ending in store for the really adventurous types. Number 1. Sally.exe, The Whisper of Soul Sally.exe, The Whisper of Soul is the direct sequel to Sonic.exe Spirits of Hell. So Talkman, why are you covering this game and not the first one in the series? Simply put, I couldn't get the first game to run correctly on my PC, so chalk that up to technical difficulties, but let's dive into this lore halfway. The Whisper of Soul is highly based on the original sequel to Sonic.exe, Sally.exe. You take control of Amy, Cream, and Sally as they attempt to survive the onslaught of Sonic.exe. Similar to Nightmare Beginning, you can actually survive in this game if you play your cards right, and there are several different outcomes of the story based on who lives and dies. The game begins with Amy, searching the forest for Cream the Rabbit's chow, Cheese. When she encounters Sonic, she's none the wiser about his possessed being, trusting him as he guides her further into the forest to meet her doom. You have conversation options that you need to select to question Sonic's intentions, which will allow you to survive the encounter. Finally, when the jig is up, Amy escapes further into the forest, and I will say out of all the games I've covered so far in this video, this has the best gameplay by far. It focuses on fleshing out the levels and gives each character unique abilities that are close to their actual counterparts. But more on that later. After Amy escapes, you control Cream, who is also on the search for cheese. This leads her to Bingo Forest, which I believe is the most fleshed out level in this game. Also, Super Mario RPG music. I like that a lot. The level is actually filled with interesting puzzles and standard Sonic based platforming that makes this a pretty fun time. You forget for a few minutes that a psychonic Sonic is coming to kill you. 
At the end of the level, Cream encounters a glowing purple butterfly that she decides to chase down. And you have one shot at this. If you want the best ending, you're gonna need this thing, so don't fail. And yeah, it leads you to the severed heads of Fang, Bark, and Bean. I never thought I would say that in a video. The next level is Dark Forest, where you're being stalked by this thing. Okay, this is actually horrifying. You have to stay hidden behind boxes to escape its clutches and get out of the forest. This is where the story gets a little hard to follow, with Tails doll saving Cream from the clutches of whatever evil is behind this. Before we play as Sally, the story cuts to Tails, Knuckles, and Eggman, who presumably survived the previous game. Ready to take on the evil that they encountered last game, they strategize to save their friends. Then we cut back to Sally, with the level South Tropics. Sally has the most interesting gameplay, where she can manipulate her sword and shield to take on the effect of several different elements, giving her a ton of versatility to traverse the level. Flame gives you a fire shield style boost in air, water gives you a speed boost much like Sonic's boost in the actual games, lightning allows you to jump higher, and wind allows you to glide, giving you an easier time with platforming. Once you complete the level, just like everyone else, Sally has to flee from the clutches of Sonic.exe, realizing Sonic is not himself. The next level puts your understanding of her skills to the test, with cues on screen showing the element you'll have to use to ward off Sonic.exe's attacks. Otherwise, you're dead. Also, don't think I didn't notice that warp version of Lavender Town playing in the back of this level. It wasn't until I lost countless times until I realized this game is packed with content. If you're working toward the true ending of this game, you're looking at about two hours plus of gameplay, as the game catalogs the perspective of each of these heroines. I would say this is the deepest in the Sonic.exe lore I've ever gone, with so many original characters coming to the forefront and being integrated with the mainline Sonic characters and Archie characters. If you're looking for a creepy Sonic game, I'd say this one is probably the best it's gonna get. With creative level design, characters with different moves and skill sets, custom sprites, interesting mini games to keep gameplay engaging, and finally a story with deep lore that high school talkmen would have eaten up with a fork and knife. Not to mention a great selection of music that fits the mood of each level. Sally.exe Whisper of Soul is worth your time if you're into the creepy Sonic fan game genre. Well kiddos, I hope you enjoyed this showcase of 5 creepy Sonic fan games. Last year Mentok covered Pokemon as his creepy fan game selection, so maybe next year we'll dabble in a different video game series. But for right now leave a like if you like this type of content. Don't worry, Mentoktober continues full speed ahead. And please leave a comment and let me know what you think about these games that I've selected. Anyway, take care and you'll be seeing more of me soon.